Okay, we want to do another one where we have a fraction. Now this particular one we notice that it's not factored. So for any problem like this that's not factored, that's going to be your first step. So we want to factor the top and bottom uh, if necessary. So I get x minus 2, x plus 2, and I get x minus 3 down below greater than 0. So now we have it in the factored form. That was our difference of squares, minus 2, plus 2. Now that we have it factored, we're ready to see what numbers we're going to put on our table or on the number line. In this case, it's whatever makes each individual thing, top or bottom, which one of those makes it equal to 0. So first, uh, I want to write down the numbers that make each of those 0, 2, negative 2, and 3. That's, that's whatever makes the top or bottom uh, equal to 0. Okay, so now that I have those, I'm ready now to create my table. So when I create the table, I'm going to put all these in this column, minus 2, plus 2, minus 3. I'm putting all those on that column. And then what I want to do after that is each of, I'm going to draw a line that represents each of these numbers here. So I have three lines I'm going to draw down here. I have one for negative two. You're putting them in order from smallest to largest. We have two and then we have three. Don't forget that you want to draw one more column beyond the last number if you're going to do it this method. So here is the completed table and now I'm ready to do my test points. I want to pick test numbers that fall in each of these regions. This is actually where I see people make the most mistakes is they actually put a round number in there that's not in that correct interval. So sometimes I'll have People might put negative 1 in here instead, and we know that's not right. We need to put negative 3. It's got to be less than negative 2. In between these numbers, we're going to use 0. 2.5 we can use for the next one, and then we're going to use 4 uh, for the last one there. Okay, so now that we have that, we can put all these numbers into the ones in the left-hand side over there, and we're going to indicate whether we get a plus or a minus. Negative 3 into the first one, negative 3 minus 2 is negative. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative. Negative 3 minus 3, that's negative also. Next, we put 0 into all these. 0 minus 2 is negative. 0 plus 2, positive. 0 minus 3, that's a negative number. Now we're going to use 2.5. 2.5 minus 2, positive. 2.5 plus 2 is positive. 2.5 minus 3, that's going to be negative. The last one, we're going to do 4. 4 minus 2 is positive, 4 plus 2 is positive, 4 minus 3, all those are going to be positive. Don't forget, you're going to multiply down each of the columns to get your final answer across the top. The way that you can do this quickly is you're just going to look at how many negatives that we have. If you have a, an odd number of negatives, your answer is going to be negative. So I see three negatives here, I know my answer is going to be negative. Over here, I have an even number. If you have an even number of negatives, it's going to be positive. So I do a plus here. One negative down there means that's going to be negative, and this is all going to be positive, and you get a plus there in the end. I finally have my final sign configuration. So if you notice a couple of the problems that you've looked at, if you looked at some of the other examples, we keep getting minus plus, minus plus, alternating signs. So the question is, is every problem always going to be alternating signs? And the answer to that is going to be no. Okay. Um, the reason why is because if we have squares or other higher powers there, that's going to affect your answer. And also, if you have the order switched around, like if you have a 2 minus x instead of x minus 2, that's going to change your sign configuration as well. So it's not always every one is going to be alternating signs. Even though the ones we looked at so far happen to be, there are definitely exceptions to that. So you don't want to go ahead and assume that every one is alternating signs. Now that we have this uh, sign configuration complete, we're ready now to indicate our answer. There's a, it says greater than zero here. So greater than zero means we have to look for positive numbers as our answer. So any region that has a plus on it, that's what I want to indicate with my interval notation. Between negative two and two, there's, that's a region where it's plus. Between three and infinity, that's another one where it's going to be plus. So when I write my answer, it's going to be from negative two to two, and then it's also going to be from 3 to infinity. Negative 2 to 2 is one region, and 3 to infinity is the other one. That describes each region where I have a plus signs going on in between each one. So that would be the answer for the first one. Next, I want to do the number line method. So if you do the number line method, that means you're going to put down these numbers, negative 2, 2, and 3. You put those in there. 
And again, you're testing each of these down below. So we have the same test numbers as before, negative three, zero, I have 2.5, and I have four, same test numbers as before. When I test these numbers, I wanna put them into here. I wanna use the one that's, that's factored, it'll be uh, easier to use there. You could use the, the original one as well. If that's easier for you, you could do that as well. It really makes no difference which one, top and bottom. The reason why I'm gonna use the, the bottom one here is because I'm not actually going to put in each number individually for X, write it all out and get the final answer. All I'm gonna do is write down what signs do I get for top and bottom when I put this in. So at three, okay, if I put negative three in the first one, I get a negative number there. Negative three in here, I get a negative number as a result. If I put negative three in the bottom one, I also get a negative, and notice what I have. I have an odd number of negatives. That means that the total result's gonna be minus. That's the same result I had before by using the table method. Next, I'm gonna test zero. Okay, so I'm gonna do, so basically at zero is what I'm testing next. Okay, so at the test point is zero. You put zero into each of these. Zero minus two is negative. Zero plus two positive. Zero minus three is negative. I have an even number of negatives. This time I get a plus, same result I had before. Then I wanna test it at 2.5. 2.5 is gonna go in each of these. So 2.5 here, 2.5 minus two is positive. 2.5 plus two is positive. 2.5 minus three, negative. Therefore I get a negative as my result. Then finally I'm gonna, I'm gonna be testing at uh, four, so at four. Put four in this one, four minus two is positive. Four plus two is positive. Four minus three is positive. I get all pluses, so I get a plus as a result. So I get a plus here. So this is negative and this is positive. So therefore, we get exactly the same sign configuration as we had before, which means that, again, the answer is gonna be exactly the same as before as well, because all we're doing is two different ways of getting the same result. We wanna eventually get to this sign configuration, so whether you do it by this method or this method, both of them will get you the same answer. It's two completely different processes, but the result should be the same. Your answer is gonna be this. Now we're using, again, parentheses around all these because there wasn't originally an equal sign underneath, and so that's why I have parentheses next to all these. If I had an equal sign, that means that some of these would have to have a bracket next to them, but because I have no equal sign underneath, that's why all of them are gonna be parentheses.